The movie Dune is set in the year 10,191. Humans have unfolded many secrets of the universe and now travel from planet to planet. Different planets have turned into different nations and are governed by a single Padishah Emperor named Shaddam Corino IV. The planets have houses with their respective dukes who in turn follow the orders of the Emperor Shaddam. One such planet is called Arrakis. It is a harsh desert planet that is the only source of a rare substance called spice. Spice is a valuable substance that extends human vitality and is critical for interstellar travel. Hence, Arrakis, despite its harsh conditions, is considered the most valuable planet in the known universe. Because of this, the noble houses are eager to rule the planet. At the beginning of the movie, a native of Arrakis named Chani narrates that they have been ruled by the noble House Harkonnen for a long time. The House Harkonnen is cruel to natives of Arrakis, but the poor natives cannot fight House Harkonnen, which is under the Emperor Shaddam's control. Chani also says that one day, all of a sudden, House Harkonnen's troops leave Arrakis, but she is sure that the Emperor is going to send someone else to take their place and exploit their resources. The scene then changes to another planet named Caladan, ruled by House Atreides. The Prince of Atreides, Paul, wakes up from a recurring dream. He has breakfast with his mother, Lady Jessica, who is also a member of an organization called the Bene Gesserit. Bene Gesserit is an exclusive sisterhood organization whose members have advanced physical and mental abilities. Hence, Jessica also has the power to manipulate people's minds. She has been training Paul on the organization's disciplines for a long time. Thus, Paul has powers to see the future and bears other unique powers that he is yet to discover. Paul's father, Leto, who is also the Duke of House Atreides, has an important meeting with the personnel from the Landsrad, the political body representing all the noble houses. In the evening, everyone in Atreides welcomes the VIPs who have brought a note from the Emperor Shaddam himself. The Emperor, who has recently removed House Harkonnen from Arrakis, wants Atreides to take Harkonnen's place. He wants Leto and his troops to be in charge of mining the spice from Arrakis. Duke Leto is apprehensive of the situation, but follows the Emperor's orders. Whilst in the meeting, Jessica notices a member of the Bene Gesserit organization, Gaius Helen Mohayim, staring at Paul. The meeting ends when Leto marks a seal with his ring, confirming that they will follow the orders and go to Arrakis. In the following scene, we see Atreides' troops preparing to leave for Arrakis. Among the troop is their bravest soldier named Duncan Idaho, who is also Paul's close friend. Paul has been getting visions about Duncan's death in Arrakis, which he is worried about. Duncan assures him that he will be fine and leaves for the planet to prepare for Paul and the family's arrival. The following scene shows us Paul and his father Leto talking about various matters. Leto reveals he has no interest in gaining wealth using the spice. Instead, he plans on befriending the people of Arrakis, called the Fremen. Unlike the former Duke, Harkonnen, he plans to treat the Fremen with respect so they can be a valuable asset to Atreides. Later, Paul and his associate, Gurney Halleck, practice a duel. They both have wrist devices that creates a layer of protective force around their body. Halleck is worried that they will be attacked by the jealous Harkonnen, so he asks Paul to be careful when they reach Arrakis. Elsewhere, in the house of Harkonnen, the former ruler of Arrakis, Baron Harkonnen, and his rogue nephew, Rabin, talk about their last ship leaving Arrakis, leaving the planet to the Atreides. Rabin belittles the Emperor for taking them off Arrakis and handing it to the Atreides. But he is surprised when the Baron reveals that the Emperor is actually planning on the Atreides' downfall because he is jealous of their growing popularity. The Emperor's plan is to kill Leto and all his men while they are mining spice in Arrakis. Back on Kaladin, Jessica wakes Paul up and takes him to a doctor to get his vitals checked. It turns out that the Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mohayim has come to know of Paul's visions and wants to check if he is the one they have been waiting for. She makes him put his hand in a box to test his impulse control, which he passes with great effort. After Mohayim leaves, Jessica tells Paul that the female organization, Bene Gesserit, has been steering politics for years from the shadows. They have also carefully been crossing bloodlines in order to give birth to the one man who will have the potential to save Arrakis from spice exploitation. It turns out the test Paul just passed shows that he is potentially the one they have been looking for, the Messiah of Arrakis. The very next day, Leto, Paul, Jessica, and their troops leave for Arrakis and land on the planet. 
They are welcomed by the native Fremen, who seem to already believe that Paul is their messiah, who they refer to as Mu'ad-Dib, although Paul himself believes that it is just a superstition. Later, he is in his chamber, learning about a species of massive sandworms found on Arrakis. To be safe from it, the Fremen walk in irregular motions in the sand. As Paul watches holograms, a deadly insect emerges from the wall and tries to kill him. But Paul saves himself at the right time. Upon investigation, it is found that a Harkonnen soldier had been hiding in the walls to kill Paul. The scene shifts to the Baron meeting Mahayim. She knows about the Emperor and the Baron's plan to attack Atreides, but cannot do anything because it is the Emperor's order. However, she asks the Baron not to kill Jessica and Paul. The Baron agrees to do as she says, but plans to throw the two into the sand for the sandworms to kill. Back on Arrakis, a meeting is held where the officials discuss their plan to mine the spices. It is revealed that the Harkonnens have left them with damaged equipment, setting them up for failure. After a while, Paul reunites with Duncan, who had been sent to prepare for their arrival. Duncan says that he has been living in the desert with the Fremen for four weeks. He tells them all about their ways to survive, and also about a Fremen community called Asiich and their leader, Stilgar. Stilgar has also come to meet Leto. Stilgar spits on the ground, which Gurney Halleck believes to be an insult, but it turns out to be a show of respect, as the body's moisture is the rarest commodity on Arrakis. Leto offers him to work together with the Atreides, but Stilgar belittles him for taking from their land without any return to the people. They separate on a good note, after Leto promises not to infringe upon their community. Before leaving, Stilgar looks directly at Paul and says that he recognizes him. The next day, Leto and his team go to inspect the spice sand that they will be mining from. They meet a Fremen and Imperial ecologist named Dr. Liet Kynes. She checks the integrity of Leto's still suit, which is supposed to recycle sweat and urine from a person's body into drinking water. While checking Paul's suit, Kynes notices that he already knows the Fremen's way of wearing the suit, despite it being his first time. This makes her think of a prophecy that says their messiah will know their ways of life despite being from another land. Kynes also believes Paul to be the one. After that, all of them leave to inspect the spice sand. While sightseeing, they see two sandworms approaching the harvester that mines the spice. It seems to be a usual problem as a carrier is sent to lift the harvester to get it out of the worm's reach. However, the carrier's anchor breaks and it is unable to lift the machine. A crew of 21 are inside the harvester who are about to be attacked by the worms. Leto thinks quickly and orders everyone to get their aircraft closer to the device and get the crew on board. They land on the sand minutes before the worm attacks and manage to save the crew. However, Paul gets a whiff of the spice in the process and gets a vision. When he returns home, he is still dizzy and the doctor concludes it is an allergy. However, Paul claims that he saw a Fremen girl in his vision and he knows it wasn't just an allergy. He also tells Jessica that she is pregnant, but Jessica dismisses it. The scene then shifts to the Imperial Army planet where a battalion is being prepared to attack Atreides and kill Leto and his family. They are called the Army of Sardaukar, who are said to be the deadliest army in the known world. Back on Arrakis, the doctor brings Paul a medicine to help him with the allergies. But little does Paul know, the doctor has made a deal with the Baron, and the medicine will render Paul unconscious. Leto and Jessica are also given medicine for their sleep. Jessica takes it, but Leto doesn't. After a while, the army of Sardaukar attacks. Leto wakes up and realizes what is happening, but before he can do anything, the doctor hits him with a dart that slowly makes him unconscious. Outside, the Sardaukar army wreaks havoc in the place, taking the Atreides army by surprise. Since the Sardaukar is double in number and has several weapons, they soon overpower the Atreides, who have been made sitting ducks by the Emperor. At the same time, the doctor tells an injured Leto that the Baron has abducted his wife, so he had to do what he says. The doctor then takes off Leto's ring to give it to Paul. He also places a poisonous molar tooth in Leto's jaw, saying that if he bites hard enough, the tooth will secrete poisonous gas and will kill everyone around him. This could be their only hope of taking down the Baron. Meanwhile, the Sardaukar army abducts Paul and Jessica to throw them in the desert. Paul wakes up in an aircraft with his mother gagged and tied beside him. She can use her power to manipulate people and make them do what they are told, so the two use their powers and manage to kill their abductors. Paul finds a Frem kit placed by the doctor for their help. After that, they escape into the middle of the desert. In the meantime, an unconscious Leto is taken to the Baron and stripped naked. 
The doctor asks Baron to free his wife, but he is instead killed mercilessly. The Baron then tells Leto that his bloodline will end today. Seeing no way to escape, Leto bites onto his tooth and lets out the poisonous gas that kills everyone in the room, including himself. Somewhere else, Paul and Jessica set up a tent using the kit. They also find a note from the doctor and Leto's ring. Looking at the ring, the two realize that Leto is dead and cry, mourning his death. The following morning, Duncan Idaho approaches the Fremen Imperial ecologist, Kynes, and asks her to help look for Paul and Jessica. Back in the Baron's palace, his soldiers come into the room after the poisonous gas has faded. They are surprised to see the Baron has attached himself to the ceiling and is somehow alive. At the same time, Paul trips balls from the spice in the sand and starts to get visions of the holy war that is about to happen in the future. He sees himself killing millions of people, and the deaths make him hyperventilate. A worried Jessica calms her son down. Sometime later, he wears his father's ring, taking the title of Duke of Atreides. They are soon found by Duncan, who kneels in front of Paul, calling him the Lord Duke. Then, all three of them are taken to a safe place by Kynes. The place they are staying at is an old ecological station that was supposed to provide flowing water to Arrakis. If the project had been successful, Arrakis would have been a paradise. However, before the project was completed, the spice was discovered in the sand. Everyone's attention was diverted towards harvesting the valuable spice, and the project was dismissed. A while later, the Sardaukar army reaches the safe zone and attacks everyone. Duncan puts his life at risk to save Jessica and Paul. Paul yells at him to stop because he has seen Duncan's death in his vision, but Duncan stays put to fulfill his duty. Eventually, he is killed while fighting the army, but Jessica, Paul, and Kynes manage to run away. Jessica and Paul get on an aircraft that only holds two people. Meanwhile, Kynes asks them to head south to meet the Fremen, who will help them in their cause. She plans to board an aircraft from another station. The mother and son fly away, but Kynes is soon caught by the Sardaukar soldiers. They are about to kill her when she makes a rhythmic thumping on the ground. The noise attracts a sandworm, who devours all of them in a single bite. After that, Paul's aircraft is chased by two enemy aircraft. Paul sends their vehicle into an aggressive sandstorm, making their enemies believe that they are dead. In the following scene, we see the Baron bathing in medicines to heal the injuries caused by the poisonous gas. His nephew Rabin arrives and commends him on his Marlon Brando impression. He also tells him that Leto and his bloodline are dead. Finally happy that his enemy house is destroyed, the Baron orders Rabin to continue to harvest the spice and kill all the Fremen. Somewhere else, Paul and Jessica crash land in the desert, but are safe. They change into their still suits and begin looking for the Fremen to ask them for help. Paul had learned about Fremen lives and knows the way they walk to avoid attracting the worms. They walk for the whole day, throughout which Paul gets visions of Fremen people and a specific girl telling him not to give up. The two stop to rest for a while, when suddenly, they hear a loud noise. Paul realizes that a sandworm is nearby. To save their lives, they start to run, only to be chased by the worm even faster. It emerges from the sand and is about to engulf the two, but stops midway. Someone had set off a thumper to help them. Just then, the leader of the Fremen, Stilgar, and his group surround them. It is soon revealed that they plan to kill Paul and Jessica for the fluid in their bodies. Stilgar stops his men, saying that Paul is the messiah they were told about. The others do not believe him, saying that Paul has not yet proven himself, so he cannot be the messiah. One of them insults Jessica, calling her old and a weakling. She proves herself by holding the man hostage with his life in her hands. After that, the leader asks everyone to make their way to the Siach Tabor, where Paul and Jessica's fate will be determined. Just then, the girl from Paul's visions arrives in front of him and introduces herself as Chani. As they prepare to leave, one Fremen, named Jameis, insists on having a duel with Paul. In Fremen tradition, all duels must end with someone's death. Paul, who has been training all his life, easily defeats Jameis, but he hesitates to kill him because he hasn't killed anyone in his life. At last, Paul stabs the man to death and wins the fight. Then, the others pack the dead body and make their way to the Siach Tabor. The movie ends when Paul sees a man riding a massive sandworm, and Chani tells him it is only the beginning. The ending of the movie makes it clear that there is much more to come in the sequel.